Well, it's like about three after, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get started. And obviously, if folks join in, we can uh, we can catch them up to speed. Uh, but hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here. Looks like we've got a solid turnout for today. So excited that everyone is is excited to learn about the tip. Um, so obviously, we're here today. There we go. Uh, we're here today uh, to talk through the tip process and to answer any questions that you all have about getting your projects funded. So this is the ground that we're going to cover today. Uh, we'll start with some introductions, spend a few minutes covering some MPO basics, and then we'll walk through how TIP funding works. Uh, I'll then go over how the TIP process works, including how projects are initiated and scored, and then we'll cover the timeline for this year's TIP cycle. At the end, I'll highlight a few key resources for you all, uh, and then we'll spend the rest of the hour answering any questions you have. I'll also stop in the middle for a question break, and I'm also more than happy to take questions along the way. Uh, so if you do have a question about something as it comes up, please use the raise hand function and we can call on you. Uh, more than anything, we want this to be a conversation and we want it to be helpful for you. Uh, so we're happy to cover anything and everything as it relates to TIP funding or really the MPO more broadly. Uh, so before we dive into the content, I do wanna take a couple of minutes uh, to get a sense for who's on the call. We'll start with some MPO staff introductions and then we'll have you all introduce yourselves. Um, yeah, so starting, uh, starting with staff, uh, my name is Matt Genova. I work for the Boston Region MPO. Uh, I manage our transportation improvement program, which is what you all are hopefully here today to learn about. If you're not, sorry, you're in the wrong presentation. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for, for being here. Uh, and I'll pass it off to uh, my colleagues to introduce themselves. Here, I'll go first. My name is Kate White. I'm the um, Boston Region MPO's public outreach coordinator. Um, and then I'll hand it off to Roisin. Hi everyone, I'm Roisin Foley. I do admin support to the MPO and I also do communications. It's Matt Archer. Hey everyone, I'm Matt Archer. I'm a transportation planner for the uh, Boston Region MPO. I serve as backup on the tip and thank you all for attending. Matt, I will pass it back to you. Awesome. Thanks Matt and thanks everyone. Um, yeah, so it'd be great uh, since we've got sort of a reasonably sized call here to, to do this today. Uh, if you all want to act, introduce yourselves so you can get a sense of, of who all is in the room. Uh, so if you when you introduce yourself, uh, if you can state your name, your municipality or organization, uh, your role with that munis municipality or organization, uh, and whether or not you've been through the TIP process before. Um, so we'll start, I could just call on folks sort of as you all appear on, on my list here. Uh, so we can start with Andrew McFarland. And so Matt, just remember that people can't unmute themselves. So we might want to give people a heads up and to unmute them beforehand. Okay. Yeah, so we can. Do you want me to do the unmuting or how are we doing this? Yeah, here I can, I hear and go okay. for it here. Andrew McClellan, we're gonna call on you first. Yeah. Can you all hear me? Hi, um, hi, I'm Andrew McFarland. I'm with uh, MBTA. Um, I'm the Municipal Engagement Coordinator for the Transit Priority Team. Um, we focus on bus lanes, transit signal priority, um, other improvements for um, the bus system and light rail. And um, I have not been through the TIP process before, so we're working with some cities who are interested in applying for TIP funding. I just want to better understand the process. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Andrew. Um, Anthony, we're going to unmute you next. I think we're having a little trouble unmuting you. Um, so Anthony, I'm just gonna, we're gonna pass over to Elle real fast. Elle, would you like to go next and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Elle Baker from the city of Riviera. I work in the planning and development part, department and I do mainly open space and resiliency planning. I've never been through the TIP process before. Thanks for holding this session. Thanks so much, Elle. Um, next, we're gonna have Jay. Jay, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name is Jay Jackson. I work on the same team as um, Andrew, who just spoke earlier. So with the MBTA in the transit priority team, my focus, I'm the uh, transit signal priority coordinator. So I'm focusing completely on uh, optimization of signals for um, transit priority. And so I just wanna learn more about the TIP process, understand how exactly it works uh, to help 
municipal partners as well as myself. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, Joy, would you like to go next? Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, good. Joy Glim with the Metro West Regional Transit Authority. I am the grants manager here. I'm also with Paula Doucette. She's my financial analyst, financial assistant. And I have been through the TIP process a few times, but there's always something new to learn. So I appreciate this presentation very much. Thanks so much, Joy. Um, Julie, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Julie Jamaro with the City of Revere. I'm the Transportation Coordinator. Um, I recognize many of you from the MBTA on this call, <laughs> Andrew, and um, and so I was very interested in learning more about the chip. We have several projects that um, we are interested to see if this is a um, a great process to put these projects forth. So thank you for having us. Thanks, Julie. Paula, would you like to go next? Might be having a little bit of a problem unmuting you, Paula. There you go. Paula, would you like to introduce yourself? All right, we might move on to the next one. Thank you, though. Um, Rachel, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Rachel Benson, Director of Planning in Rentham, and this is my first TIP process. Thank you for having it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rachel. Um, Stephanie, would you like to go next? Hi, my name is Stephanie. I work for the MBTA. I work with Andrew and Jay on the transit priority team, and I'm a project manager. I have not been through the TIP process before. Awesome. Thank you so much. Tech, would you like to go next? Hi, everyone. My name is Tech Lang. I am a planner here with uh, my colleagues, Al and Julie, in the planning and development department with the city. And I likewise am brand new to this process. So thank you also for inviting us into the fold. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Todd, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. How are you doing? My name is Todd Crane. I'm the transportation administrator for the town of Brookline. I've been through the tip a couple of times, but it's always good to get a refresher as we have a new project uh, that's coming through now. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Todd. Matt Genova, back to you. Awesome. Thanks, Kate. And thanks everyone for, for sort of humoring us with the intros. It's always good to see who's on the call. And um, yeah, hopefully this is helpful for all of you. Um, all right. So oh yeah, here's our contact information. Sorry, I meant to put this up earlier, but um, and I will note that we'll, we'll send out this PowerPoint afterwards. Uh, so no need to frantically take notes or try to get all our contact info down. We'll, uh, we'll follow up with this later. Um, so let's dive into some of the basics about what the MPO is and how it works. Um, so what is an MPO? If you are in a municipality in a federally defined urbanized area, what we call a UZA with a population of more than 50,000 people, then you must be part of an MPO. Obviously, since all of you are here today, uh, this applies to you. Uh, the funding for the operations of an MPO, as well as for the capital money, which again is our focus today, uh, come from a combination of federal transportation funds and required matching funds from state and local governments. Uh, in our case here in Massachusetts, uh, the matching funding comes from the state. And this is something we'll get into a little bit more later as well. So MPOs are tasked with three main responsibilities. First, uh, to develop a vision for multimodal transportation in the region. We do that primarily through our long range transportation plan, which we, is a process that we conduct every four years. We release a new plan every four years. Uh, second is to distribute federal funds to construction projects that support the vision set out in the long range transportation plan. This is obviously done through the TIP, which again is what you are here to listen to today. Um, and this is a rolling five-year capital plan. Uh, so that means the first year of, um, so every year when we do the TIP process, the first year of the sort of current TIP will come off and those projects will go to construction. And then we add a new fifth and final year. Um, so we just repeat that rolling pro process every year. So we always have five years of projects in the queue. 
Uh, and then finally, the third uh, duty of an MPO for the region is to carry out multimodal transportation at a regional scale. And we do that primarily through our unified planning work program, uh, which allocates funding to studies and technical assistance to benefit uh, regional planning. So who serves on the Boston Region MPO board? So our MPO is a diverse place. Uh, the Boston Region is made up of 97 cities and towns and communities range from relatively rural towns such as Dover to large urban centers such as Boston and Cambridge. So the board is tasked with accounting for the demographic, cultural, and environmental diversity of the region and considering the various means by which residents and visitors travel throughout the region. So who makes up the 22 voting seats on the Boston Region MPO board? Uh, so MPOs around the country are all a bit different, but the MPOs in Massachusetts are all chaired by the State Department of Transportation. They provide, again, the, the local match to the federal dollars, uh, which is why they chair all of the, board, all of the MPO boards. Uh, other state entities are also included for a total of five state held seats between MassDOT, the MBTA, and Massport. Obviously, we have a lot of our colleagues from the MBTA here on the call today. So on the local side, we have 12 elected municipalities on the board. There are four at-large cities and towns, representatives from each of the eight subregions that make up our greater region. There are two permanent seats for the city of Boston as the, as the seat of our region. And then there are some seats for advisory councils and boards. Uh, the MPO has its own dedicated advisory council, which has a seat. And then there are also seats for the MBTA Advisory Board and MAPC, who is the MPO's Vice Chair. So the MPO has a vision for the region, which is again set out every four years through the MPO's long range transportation plan. The MPO envisions a modern, well-maintained transportation system that supports a sustainable, healthy, livable, and economically vibrant region. The MPO also has numerous goals for the region, which are centered around six themes, safety, system preservation and modernization, capacity management and mobility, clean air and sustainable communities, transportation equity, and economic vitality. When the MPO considers projects for funding, projects are evaluated in these six areas, which is something that I'll come back to here shortly when we get into more details on the TIP process. So arguably the most important cross-cutting theme for the MPO is supporting a transportation system that is truly multimodal. Um, so that means for projects seeking MPO funding, we're interested in how the project supports mobility for all users, including those walking, biking, driving, and taking transit. While we don't expect every project to do everything, projects that create benefits for all users tend to score much more highly than those that don't, making these projects more likely to get funded sooner. So let's move now into where TIP funding comes from and how the MPO thinks about distributing TIP funds to transportation projects. So funding in the TIP uh, comes from the Federal Highway Administration and the Federal Transit Administration. The funding that the MPO has discretion over comes solely from the FHWA. So I'm gonna focus on that throughout the rest of this presentation. I'll, watch through, I'll walk through what this looked like for the federal fiscal years 2021 through 2025 TIP, uh, which is the currently active TIP that just took effect on October 1st of this year. Over that five-year time period, nearly $3.5 billion in federal highway funds are allotted to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. MassDOT takes $475 million of that to pay the debt service for the accelerated bridge program through which projects have already been funded using grant anticipation notes. That leaves just over $3 billion in federal highway funding available statewide. MassDOT then provides the 20% match to that 80% federal share, resulting in slightly more than $3.7 billion in federal and state funding combined for transportation planning and projects across the state. A couple more steps here, uh, $232 million of that funding over five years is allocated to planning and pass-throughs, which is a large bucket of things, including operations funding for both MassDOT and all 13 MPOs in the state. 
This funding also supports the studies we do in the region through our unified planning work program. MassDOT retains roughly two thirds of the remaining funding, which they use to fund numerous projects across the state, including those that may be ongoing in your respective municipalities or service areas. The remaining one third of funding is distributed to the 13 MPOs across Massachusetts. So on that subject, uh, the Boston Region MPO is one of 13 similar entities in the state. The Boston Region receives 43% of the statewide MPO funding each year, or roughly $110 million annually. This is because the allocation of money to MPOs is based on different formulas that consider things like roadway miles, population, and employment. The Boston Region, has roughly one third of the road, roadway miles and half of the jobs and population in the state. That's about 3 million people and supports 2 million jobs. So based on that, the five-year TIP funding for the state breaks down as follows. Uh, the Boston Region MPO has slightly less than $540 million to spend on TIP projects over five years with the remaining 715 million or so distributed to the 12 other MPOs in the state. So I should note again that these numbers are for the current TIP and that these will change slightly for the TIP cycle that we're just now beginning. We don't receive guidance from FHWA and MassDOT on our exact funding capacity until January, uh, but we fully expect it to be in the neighborhood of $110 million for federal fiscal year 2026, which again will be the new year of the TIP this cycle. So in order to guide decision-making, the MPO has established six of what we call investment programs, which are essentially buckets of project types that we prioritize for funding. We spend a plurality of our funding on complete streets projects, and then allocate anywhere between two and 13% of funds to intersection improvement, bicycle and pedestrian, transit, and first and last mile community connections projects. We also have an investment program called major infrastructure, which includes projects over $50 million, projects on limited access highways, and projects that expand the fixed guideway transit system. The MPO aims to spend no more than 30% of its funding on these projects. So I'm happy to talk more later about what's, what fits into each of these buckets during the discussion, uh, if that's something that you all have questions on. I also want to clarify uh, that what we're really talking about when we reference these investment programs and allocating MPO funding to projects uh, there are several different kinds of projects in the TIP, of which MPO prioritized projects are just one subset, although again, that's what we're focusing on today. So the TIP includes all other projects funded using federal dollars, including all of the projects prioritized by MassDOT using FHWA funds, so the funds that I was talking about earlier, as well as projects funded by the MBTA, MWRTA, and CADA using FTA funds. In short, if it's federally a federally funded transportation project in the region, then it appears in the Boston Region MPO TIP. There are also a number of transportation projects in the region that are not included in the TIP. Uh, this includes projects funded using state transportation dollars, uh, which show up in MassDOT's CIP, as well as any projects funded using local dollars. So before we get into talking more about the TIP process and, and timeline for that, uh, I can stop there for a few minutes and see if there are any questions or, or comments on any of that. Uh, and if not, we can always come back to, to some of this content at the end of the presentation, but wanted to at least give folks a, a chance to, to ask questions if, if there's anything pressing on, on folks' minds. Just a reminder to everyone, just use the raise hand function, which is in the bottom right hand corner of your participants list. That will indicate to us that you have a question and we can unmute you. not seeing any hands, uh, so we'll go ahead and, and keep going. Uh, but again, if you have questions that, that come up along the way, feel free to, to go ahead and use the raise hand function as we go. Uh, so let's dive into the nuts and bolts of project initiation and evaluation. So once you have a project that aligns with the MPO priorities for the TIP, which I talked about earlier through those project types, uh, you need to understand the overall process for initiating a project, getting MassDOT approval for it, getting it evaluated with the MPO scoring criteria, and then getting it considered for programming in the TIP. 
Uh, I should note that this process will look slightly different for uh, roadway and bicycle and pedestrian projects uh, than it will for uh, transit projects and uh, community connections projects. So that's something that we can talk about uh, perhaps in the Q&A if there, if there are questions on sort of how, how each of those processes play out, because um, I know it can be a bit confusing. Um, so this slide shows the major steps in the process, um, again, for sort of traditional roadway and bicycle and pedestrian projects that are funded through the TIP, um, and really shows sort of how the MassDOT process and the Boston Region MPO process fit together. So the MassDOT process is on the left, and the MPO process is on the right. Um, so before you even start the project initiation process, it's critical to have early conversations with both us at the MPO and with your MassDOT Highway District representative. Uh, we'll help you understand if your project is a good fit for the TIP and can be a resource to guide you through the process as a whole. The earlier we know about your project, the more helpful we can be. Um, so we're, it's really never too early to reach out and start that project funding conversation. So to start the project initiation process, you need to fill out what's called a project need form as well as a project initiation form, which are approved by MassDOT. This, pro this process takes place on an online GIS-based system called MAPIS, uh, and I'll show you on the next slide what that interface looks like for those who haven't seen it. Uh, on the MassDOT side of things, during project initiation, you'll work closely with MassDOT for guidance on project planning. So they're really your main point of contact when you're first getting your project off the ground. Once projects are through the initiation stage, uh, they're reviewed by MassDOT's project review committee. And at this stage, once projects are PRC approved, uh, they can enter the universe of projects to be considered for TIP funding by the MPO. Uh, PRC meetings tend to happen three to four times a year, so roughly quarterly. Um, and I'll talk about the, the next one that's upcoming here soon, which is on December 17th, uh, a little bit later. So in most cases, for again, for roadway and bicycle and pedestrian projects, if a project has not been approved by the project review committee, uh, then we can't consider it for funding in the TIP. Uh, again, this is a little bit different for community connections and transit projects because the administration of those projects um, can be slightly different. Uh, so please reach out to me if you're unsure of what this looks like for your project and we can help talk you through it. Uh, so there are typically anywhere between 60 and 100 projects in total in the TIP project universe. And a subset of about 25 or so of those are well developed enough that we can evaluate them in any given year. So after PRC approval, uh, it's important that you continue to advance your project through the sort of project design process, environmental uh, design, right of way, all of that, um, sort of adjacent to the MPO process. Um, just given that um, you know TIP funds are, are constrained and we can't necessarily fund every project that comes before us uh, with. MPO funds in any given year. And so really, um, even if your project isn't actively funded by the MPO, it's still a priority for you and your municipality or agency. Um, definitely continue that project design process so that you're ready for, for uh, to come back for TIP funding in a future year. Um, so once we evaluate and score projects, we present the list of 25 or so projects grouped by type to the MPO. So it's important to note here that when projects are scored, they're considered in relation to projects of the same type. So for example, uh, the score of a bicycle and pedestrian project is not compared to the score of a complete streets project, but is rather compared to scores of other bicycle and pedestrian projects that are being considered for funding. Uh, so after we discuss the initial evaluation results with the MPO, MPO staff make a recommendation of which new projects to program in the TIP. The MPO considers this recommendation, votes to approve it or to make changes to it, and then puts uh, that final recommendation out for public review and comment. After that, the MPO vo votes to endorse the TIP, uh, which will take uh, effect on October 1st of that same year. So for this year, um, late May of 2020 is when the MPO endorsed um, the current TIP and then it took effect uh, on October 1st, so about three and a half weeks ago. Uh, and from there, once you're programmed in the TIP, uh, your project will con continue the design process with MassDOT uh, until you're ready for construction, which is obviously the end goal here for all of us. Uh, so this slide just gives you a sense of what the MAPIT uh, pro interface tool looks like. So this is the Massachusetts Project Intake Tool. Uh, if you haven't already set up an account, you'll need to request a GeoDOT account through MassDOT and then initiate your project through the MAPIT system. 
Uh, again, your MassDOT Highway District planners are the best point of contact uh, for getting set up in MAPIT. Um, and their contact information uh, is available on the last slides of this PowerPoint. And so we will certainly direct you to them uh, if you haven't already been in touch with them. So all projects being considered for the TIP are scored by MPO staff, uh, including both myself and Matt Archer on the call today, as well as several other staff members. As I mentioned earlier, our scoring criteria are broken out by these six goal areas you see here, safety, system preservation, et cetera. And the criteria are again applied by project type. Um, this is actually a new change for this year as we recently wrapped up a year long process to revise our scoring criteria. This means that we have slightly different criteria for bicycle and pedestrian projects than we do for intersection improvement projects, for example. Uh, and this helps give, uh, give us a more tailored score for each type of project because the criteria are really tailored to, to what those projects are doing. And we recognize that um, different types of projects can do different things. Uh, so as a part of the scoring process, we'll have you fill out uh, what we call our proponent questionnaire, which is just a series of questions that provide us with the information we need to score your project on all of our criteria. We'll also request that you submit any conceptual designs, functional design reports, uh, road safety audits and other supporting information for your project, all of it which helps us score your project more accurately. So now that you have a sense of how projects are initiated and scored, I want to talk a little bit more concretely about how this year's TIP process will play out. So this is our anticipated timeline and we'll follow it pretty closely, uh, though it's possible that some of these dates may fluctuate a little bit here and there. Uh, if there are any date changes, we will certainly keep you all posted on that as those changes happen. So since the federal fiscal year starts on October 1st, we are now officially into the new TIP cycle. So we're in the process of gathering information now on new projects to consider for funding, which we'll continue to do over the next few months. In November, we'll present an initial list of projects to consider for funding, which is known as our universe of projects to the MPO board. In December, We'll finish gathering project information on new projects and move into project scoring. Importantly, as I noted earlier, uh, the last MassDOT PRC meeting before um, for projects that are interested in being considered for funding in this TIP cycle is coming up on December 17th. If your project isn't approved by that meeting, we can't consider it for funding this year. Uh, and again, that process is going to be a little bit different um, for uh, transit and uh, community connections or first and last mile projects versus more traditional roadway projects. So again, we can sort of talk about that um, if there are questions on, on that distinction. In January, we'll wrap up project evaluations. We'll send out draft scores to project proponents, so you all, for review. We very much view this as a collaborative process and want to make sure that our scoring is accurate. So it's really critical that we hear from you throughout the winter as we finalize project scores. Uh, we'll send out numerous emails throughout this time uh, to everyone who has projects in consideration for funding. So please uh, read them and reply as needed. I will apologize in advance for blowing up your inboxes throughout the winter, um, but there's a lot to communicate on and, and our priority is to always make sure that we're on the same page. Um, so please do take a peek at those as those emails come. So in February, we'll get an update from MassDOT on how projects that are currently programmed in the TIP are looking. This is when we learn what's behind schedule and what's over budget. So things will begin to move around in the TIP pretty soon thereafter. We'll also present the project scores to the MPO in February uh, for new projects that are in consideration for funding. Uh, and this formally kicks off the board's discussions of which projects they wanna fund this year. Throughout March, those conversations uh, with the board will continue and the MPO will arrive at a draft list of projects to fund by the end of the month to the end of March. Uh, I should also note that we welcome uh, comment letters and in-person comments to the MPO board at any time. Uh, but these meetings in January through March tend to be the busiest time of year for comments from both uh, project proponents as well as uh, stakeholders in the broader public. Uh, if you have questions on how to go about advocating for your project to the board, uh, please do let us know and we can guide you through it. Uh, at this point, it's likely that all of the MPO meetings into the spring will be virtual. Uh, so it's easier than ever to attend a meeting and weigh in. Um, and finally, as we move into April and May, the draft tip will be released for a formal 21 day public review period with the MPO board endorsing the final plan by the end of May. 
a few more things to cover here. Uh, so in terms of immediate next steps, uh, if you do have a project that you want us to consider for funding this year, uh, you'll need to complete your project need form and your project initiation form with MassDOT uh, within the next three to four weeks in order to get on the agenda for the De December 17th PRC meeting. Uh, so if this does apply to you and you haven't yet uh, filled these out, please let me know ASAP and we can get the ball rolling. Uh, for all projects more broadly, we do need project information submitted to us by the second week in December so that we can sc start scoring projects for funding, uh, which again will take place through most of January. So I'll close just by highlighting a few resources for you all uh, as you navigate the TIP process. And again, we'll send around these slides afterwards, so there's no need to sort of jot all this down as we go. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, reaching out to your MassDOT Highway District representative is really the best way to kick off the TIP process. Uh, if you're unsure of, who, of which highway, highway district you're in, uh, the link is here at the bottom of the page, and you can just type in your community and, and we'll get you connected with your highway district. Uh, we've also included some helpful links here, uh, including to the MPO's TIP development page, uh, where much of the information that we've covered today is hosted. Links are also included here to MassDOT's project initiation and development pages. Uh, so in closing, I want to share sort of a few final thoughts on what happens uh, once your project is programmed in the TIP. Uh, first, uh, open lines of communication are really key as your project advances. Uh, it's important to keep MPO staff in the loop. You can always send us design changes or updates on project progress or reach out to us if you're having trouble moving your project along for some reason. It's also critical to keep MassDOT informed of where your project stands. Between you all as the project proponents, us at the MPO, project consultants, and different departments at MassDOT, uh, information often gets lost in the shuffle. So really more communication is always better to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Second, uh, when a project is programmed in a specific year, you are really committing to an advertisement date and need to continue to advance your project. Uh, if your project design is delayed, that could put your funding in jeopardy as funds may not be available in an immediate later year to cover the cost of your project. So this has the potential to delay your project by multiple years. Um, as much as possible, we, we do try to limit uh, the extent to which projects are delayed, but um, but you know, there's only so much we can do. And if a project design just hasn't advanced uh, far enough to, to keep it on track, then, then inevitably projects every year will, will be forced to be delayed. Um, and similarly, cost overruns can jeopardize your project's timeline if funds aren't available in your current fiscal year to cover your project costs. Uh, in short, because the TIP is both a schedule and a compilation of project costs that is fiscally constrained, changing either one of these elements, so either the schedule or the cost, inevitably creates sort of winners and losers as project shifts or project projects shift around every year. So the more on track and on budget your project is, uh, the less likely it is that you'll be on the losing end of any changes in the tip. Um, third, project design can always take longer than anticipated. And depending on your project, things like the right of way and environmental processes can be pretty complex. Uh, so please advance your project design as early as you can. As a bonus, if your project is ahead of schedule on design, it may be possible for you to move into an earlier year of the TIP than you were originally scheduled in um, if funding becomes available as other projects move around. So if you want to put yourself in a position to take advantage of this, uh, staying on top of your project design and keeping it moving forward uh, even ahead of schedule will allow you to do that. Just a couple more things here really quickly. Uh, again, my contact information is at the front, but you can also reach out here. Uh, if you need it. And again, contact information for Kate, Roisin, and Matt are, is also on the, those uh, introductory slides. Um, and we're all the, again, the MPO staff on the call with you today. So that's it. It's a lot of information, uh, but I'm happy to open it up now to questions, comments, concerns. Um, and again, if you have questions sort of on the tip in that process or just on the MPO more broadly and how the MPO process works, um, we definitely want to want to be a resource for you on any of those fronts. Uh, so please ask away. Um, and again, if you want to use the the raise hand function to indicate you have a question, then we can unmute you. Uh, 
Awesome. Looks like Julie has a question. So I have a couple of questions. So, so we, um, so I've been dealing a, a lot with Frank and Brian, District Four. Um, we just started dealing with Connie um, in District Four on another project. So, but going forward, are, should they be included in any communication that we have with the MPO as we go through the product development? I mean, the project development. Um, and then my second question is, would the project review team um, say if we wanted to put a couple of projects? up for uh, project consideration would, I mean, how many do you allow for each municipality? Is it just one, is it two? How does that work? Uh, yeah, both really good questions. Uh, so I'd say on uh, your first one on sort of keeping the district informed, um, definitely like as you're getting your project up and running, so completing your project need form and your project initiation form and then getting through uh, MassDOT's project review committee, um, they'll be pretty critical sort of through that whole process. Uh, so definitely keeping them in the loop uh, and obviously giving them a heads up that you're you know, talking to us about, about seeking funding is always helpful as well. Uh, I know the folks at the highway districts tend to help try to like funnel projects to, um, to you know, for consideration with uh, mass stop funds as well. So um, giving them a sense early of, of whether or not your project is, is anticipating seeking MPO funds is always good. Um, once your project has sort of been approved by the project review committee and uh, has funding dedicated to it, uh, then well, actually once it's through the project review committee, you'll be given a, a MassDOT project manager. And so that person will really be sort of your primary point of contact. Um, and there may still be some sort of lingering communications with the, with the folks at the district as well. Um, you know, usually they like to stay in the loop and follow projects all the way through um, so that they know sort of where your project stands and can, you know, sort of consider it in a bigger picture with, with other things going on in the district. Yeah, because um, I know that um, MassDOT has or has one project of their own uh, that encompasses Revere and Malden and Saugus uh, that they are looking to propose. Um, but then we also have our own project list. Uh, within the city that we would like to consider as well. So I want to make sure that we are, are not being boxed out because <laughs> they already have uh, something planned um, in, a, in a regional project scheme uh, that includes Revere. Totally. Um, yeah, so really like sort of, yeah, more communication is better just to make sure everyone sort of okay. knows the, the fuller landscape, um, you know, and if, if it gets to a point where they're like, okay, like we know about this, like, you know, they might just say like, okay, you don't need to reach out, okay. like, you know, for this next thing, or just keep us in the loop when, you know, when X next step happens, et cetera. Um, okay. But they'll, you know, they'll be able to give you a, a good sense of sort of what they need to know and when, um, okay. but, but definitely early on, like keeping the, okay. that communication open is good. Um, and then I guess sort of, you know, related to your, your second question here on the number of projects that you can put forward, um, there's no hard limits. Uh, so over the last few years, we've had <clears throat> like last year we had two projects in the same municipality under consideration. Um, the year before, I think we had three projects in the same municipality under consideration. Um, so it definitely happens. Um, and what can happen here too, is that when we're considering projects for funding, uh, you know, often MassDOT is also, well, they're always also sort of doing their own considerations. Mm -hmm. uh, and so sometimes when um, you know, if there's sort of multiple projects in a municipality that are being put forth, um, you know, we might sort of split split duties on that and have the MPO fund one and MassDOT fund another, um, that sort of thing. So there's there's no real limit um, because projects can sort of pursue multiple avenues. Um, but I would say, you know, if you're ready to submit more than one project uh, for consideration, you can always go ahead and do that. I mean, you know. Again, obviously the tip is uh, financially constrained and there's always more demand for, for project funding than we have available in project funds. Um, so both projects might not get funded right away, but I think you know the earlier you can have sort of both of them in the pipeline, the earlier the MPO knows that you know, you're pursuing these projects uh, and then just uh, you know, gives you opportunities to have both projects considered uh, over time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, Liz, uh, so I got a question. Oh, sorry, Matt, RJ. No, you, go ahead, Kate, I'm sorry. Oh, I just got a question in the chat um, that I'd love to share. 
Um, so one question was, how do towns ensure that their products don't get bumped off the tips? You talked a little bit about, you know, costs or schedule changes, but what can a town or city do to ensure that the projects continue to stay on schedule or in the program? Yeah, it's definitely a good question. Um, staying uh, on schedule or ahead of schedule and on budget or even under budget, which is always a pleasant surprise. Um, I mean, those are really the two ways to to keep it to keep your project moving forward uh, in its current year, or again to potentially even move up a year or two um, if your project is is well ahead of schedule and, and funding becomes available. Um, unfortunately, this past year, uh, for those who kept tabs on the on the tip development uh, this past spring, we had a sort of a, a very high number of of cost overruns that sort of forced us into a position where some projects that were on schedule. Uh, were actually delayed just because we didn't have enough funding uh, to keep everything in, in its current year. And so in those decisions, uh, you know, from the staff perspective, from, from our level, usually what we recommend to the board is, you know, if any projects need to get bumped due to financial limitations, even if it's not sort of a financial or schedule issue with, with their project, um, you know, the projects that are further along and the projects that are staying on budget are the ones that we prioritize sort of keeping where they are. And then other projects that, you know, have questions about whether or not they're on track schedule wise or, you know, projects that, that have cost increases are more likely to get, to get bumps. Um, yeah, so it really, there's no like hard and fast rule around this because every year differs uh, in terms of the, you know, magnitude of, of schedule and cost changes that need to be reconciled. Um, but yeah, but really like, you know, keeping it on on track design wise and, and on budget are, are the two best things. Um, I would say it's it's exceedingly rare that a project that is both on budget and on schedule gets gets moved into a later year. Uh, Matt, we have a question from Andrew. I'm just going to go ahead and unmute him. Hi, thanks, Matt. Um, I, I just was trying to track down where the project need form and the project um, initiation form are on the CTPS website. Yeah, I, I was been sure. Like, I, I I don't know if I missed it, but I, I didn't see it in the presentation either. Yeah, I can. Um, give me just a sec. I can pull up the link here and send it out in the chat. Um, okay, just sent the link. Um, so they're hosted on uh, MassDOT's website. And uh, this is sort of a, an interface that they manage, the, the MapIt system. And so, um, yeah, so getting set up in there is um, sort of the, the first step here. Um, yeah, and again, knowing, I mean, we've talked a little bit in other settings about um, some of the like bus lane projects and other things that, that the team may be considering. Um, so we can always talk sort of, um, you know, in, an, in another venue about, um, you know, what what the right avenue to pursue is for, for a given project to make sure that, that we're directing you to the right place. Thanks for yeah, and just as a follow up for that, but tr like traditionally, our transit projects just uh, like not roadway projects. Like if we're looking at um, bus stop improvements or um, bus lanes or any other like traffic signal improvements, that's all typically highway projects. Or yeah, so um, so I think the the key difference here is sort of. Um, a on who is actually administering the project. So if it's a project that uh, MassDOT would administer through their highway division, uh, then it does need to go through the like, MAPIT system and through the project need and project initiation form. Um, but if it's a project that um, where we would flex funding to um, from FHWA funds to sort of FTA funds, and then have you all administer it as the MBTA, um, then that process would, would look a little bit different. And you, uh, I don't think you would need to go through the, the PIF and PNF. 
process. Um, so typically, I mean, for, you know, things like, um, you know, bus lane or bus stop improvements, those sorts of things. Um, you know, a lot of the projects that we funded in the past have been like complete streets projects that a, a municipality is putting forth that include those sorts of improvements. Uh, but it's a little bit different um, because in that setting, um, the municipality is the project proponent and MassDOT is the, the project administrator. Um, so yeah, so it might, it might be helpful for us to talk a little bit more about sort of specific projects and um, so we can direct traffic a little bit more on, on the best fit for, for you all pursuing those. That's kind of a great segue. I'm gonna send a link in the chat that if anyone's interested in having a one-on-one -on -one with Matt and some of our staff, you just like very specific details about your projects. We really wanna offer time that you can kind of talk to those. So I'll send a link and you can sign up for a half an hour or conversation with Matt. Um, you know, I'm just talk the whole 30 minutes if you don't want, um, but it, just to block off the time that works well for you. Yeah, thanks, Kate. That's a, a great reminder. Um, yeah, any other questions or, or comments? And one thing to remind everyone is that we're going to send the slides out afterwards, as well as some other supportive material and links that we've shared throughout the session. Um, so that you can have all of that in one place. Um, and then again, if you want to get in touch with us, we're always here to talk. Nope. Julie, I think I see you raising your hand. Do you want me to unmute you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Thank you. So I have one other question. Um, so when you talk about project readiness and you submit your project ideas, um, how important is it to have some sort of 25% design um, with the submittal? Yeah, uh, also a really good question. Uh, the short answer is that we are somewhat flexible. Uh, we have scored and uh, set funding aside for projects that are sort of pre 25%, uh, meaning that they you know, might have sort of a robust project concept design and, and maybe some basic, um, you know, there might be like a road safety audit or, or some other sort of basic, like um, sort of entry level information about the project, um, but there may not be a full uh, functional design report or a 25% design. Um, yes, yeah, so we try to be, flexible sort of project by project, um, you know, and we'll work with you to, to make sure that we have the, you know, enough information to actually evaluate the project and give it a score, um, which is really where that other component, the project proponent questionnaire comes in, is that even if you don't have like formal project documentation around everything, if, you know, if you can fill that out in, in enough detail, uh, then we can usually score your project um, pretty well. So, you know, we try to sort of meet you where you are, where you are understanding that it does take you know a lot of resources at the municipal level to get to a full 25% design and sometimes it's tough to um, you know convince uh, city council or town meeting or whatever to allocate those funds uh, without you know dedicated capital funding um, so we, we try to be flexible on that but you know more design is, is always better if you if you have it looks like you have a follow up so my other question to that is how old, like say if we do have some older design or concept, I guess what is the limitation on those that we could use as, as, a, as a basis for putting the project forward? Yeah. Are we talking five years? Are we talking 10 years? I mean, I'm just trying to think if we, we do have a lot of projects that have been talked about, some sort of design has been created and then it's been, you know, put on the shelf for some time. So I think we're just trying to figure out um, when putting these things in, you know, what, you know, what's the lifespan of the um, information we already have now? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I guess there isn't a hard cutoff for us in terms of our ability at the MPL level to consider the project for funding. Um, you know, if you do have design documentation, that's you know, more than a few years old, uh, you will have to sort of redo that as you move through the, the project design process with MassDOT. Um, I want to say that they're cut off for 
um, for 25% middles is like maybe just two years um, where you need, you know, it needs to be sort of an active current design. Um, you know, and I imagine even if you have these older designs uh, sort of on the shelf, like, you know, municipal priorities may have changed. You might want to update those anyways uh, as you move through the project development process. Um, so that would need to happen, uh, you know, to keep the project moving forward the actual, through the actual development process and into uh, to advertisement and construction. But, um, but yeah, for the MPO process in terms of just, you know, getting, getting in line for funding, um, you can always submit that to us if, uh, and, you know, we'll take a look at it. I mean, we've definitely scored projects with design documentation that's several years old and that's okay. Um, but I guess, you know, our sort of big request there is like, if there are notable changes from that initial design that you're already considering to definitely let us know that um, so that we can, you know, consider the project sort of as, as it's envisioned today versus, you know, what the original design may have, may have looked at. Cool, so we've got about five minutes left if uh, any other folks have questions or comments. Um, yeah, and as uh, other staff have mentioned, I mean, we're, we're all available sort of anytime uh, via email, via phone. Uh, so even if you are still formulating questions or, or if you think of something later, uh, we're always happy to, to have follow-ups. And then as Kate noted, um, if you do have specific projects you wanna talk through and, and um, you know, want to get into the weeds on those, um, you can always set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation with us. I just want to thank you all for coming and attending too. It's really great to be able to see you all and also connect and share this information. Um, so thanks for taking the time to come. Yeah, we'll definitely second Kate's sentiments there. Um, you know, this is, you know, we know that you all are, are busy and have a lot on your plates. So um, definitely appreciate your time. Um, cool. So if there are no other questions, um, yeah, we can go ahead and wrap up a, a few minutes early. But thanks again for coming. Uh, and again, please, please do follow up. Uh, if, if you think of anything along the way, We're happy to be to be helpful. And, and really, like, even if it's not tip related, if you have other questions about um, you know, advancing a, a technical assistance project or a, a study through the MPO. Um, we're always happy to be resources on sort of all of the above. And really just want to help you all, you know, understand and take advantage of, of the MPO process and resources, um, however is helpful, so. Done. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll we'll hang around at the for MPO staff uh, if folks have any other questions or comments. But otherwise, we will let you all enjoy your Monday. Thanks again. <laughs>